Hello and welcome to a Star Citizen Crusader Mercury Star Runner full ship buyer's guide. This is one of the most anticipated now flyable ships in game. The Crusader Industries Star Runner chassis raises the bar on speed, efficiency and overall performance. The Mercury ticks all the boxes required for a multi-purpose courier vessel and then some. From the near impenetrable onboard data encryption to the massive cargo hold, it's battle ready, uniquely stylish and built for speed. Whatever you're transporting, there's no safer or more secure vessel. Like everything Crusader produces, the Mercury is built with the engineering and design principles that have made them the go-to manufacturer for galactic transport on every scale. It's your ultimate expeditious transport solution. And that's one of the main focuses of that Mercury Star Runner is it is a data and cargo runner, but it is also an extremely versatile multi-role ship targeted for ideally a group of three players though it is going to be suitable for two or even one player with some concessions the ship is available now from $225 war bond if you wish to buy it with real money meaning not using any store credit and $260 using store credit the ship is flyable now but we don't know when it's going to be available to purchase in game with Alpha EC though I would suspect Q1 2021 the ship is 56 meters long and 51 meters wide, also being 16 meters tall and split over two decks, though most of the lower deck is vents. The ship's top speed is 1,286 meters a second, with SCM speeds of 215 meters a second currently. The cargo bay of the ship is 114 SCU. 108 of this is the main cargo room, which is immediately seeable from the rear of the ship. There's also another 6 SCU in a little more secure side room. The cargo area and ramp allow for something as large as an Urza rover to be safely parked there, or multiple rocks or various arrangements of ground vehicles while still having room for cargo. You're not going to be able to get a ballista or Nova tank in the back though, so bear that in mind, but anything smaller than an Urza rover should fit. The ship is furnished with loads of medium components and systems, two power plants, two coolers, two shields, two each hydrogen and quantum fuel tanks. Currently the ship is extremely hydrogen fuel hungry and its intakes seem to take practically no fuel on themselves. I suspect that this will change in the near future though, it does need some fuel balancing for sure, it's something that Cloud Imperium are much aware of, uh, expect it to be fixed by 3.12. Weapons wise, the ship is covered by six size 3 Panther laser repeaters and standard. Two of these are controlled by the pilot on the nose turret. Then you've got two other manned turrets, one on the top and one on the bottom, each with two size 3 Panther laser repeaters as well. The pilot has access to eight size 2 missiles from two size 4 hardpoints as well, so there's a reasonable amount of missile going on there. Interior wise, there's a lot of facilities and many rooms in the Mercury Star Runner. There's a ramp at the back of the ship. This is your entry point and exit point of the ship. It opens into the cargo bay. There's a little panel to the left of the ship or the port of the ship uh, so that you can actually open that ramp up. Then to your left or on the port side of the ship, there is the engineering room with component access. Back in the cargo room, there's an elevator that leads to the main deck. The server room here is one of the core functions of the Mercury Star Runner, a large data storage for data running. Uh, I expect this to be similar to cargo in many ways, but with a fancy UI instead of physical boxes. The server room also has access to the top and bottom turret stations. Leading off the port side of the ship from the server room, there's a scanning room. It's a little overly spacious, but there's a station here so that you can make use of the ship's enhanced scanning and potential data interception abilities. Very useful for missions in the future, I suspect. Leaving the server room towards the front of the ship, we have a habitation room to the right or the starboard side of the ship. Here there are three beds, gear storage, seating and workstations, as well as a pair of toilets and showers. On the other side of the ship, there's a recreation room with kitchenette, seating, and a functional chessboard. A little clunky, but you could actually play a game of chess there if you wanted. Moving towards the front of the ship again, there's a bit more of a corridor and then the cockpit with a pilot and co-pilot station. The ship is also set up with the latest tech for buttons and lighting. You might think that's pretty minor, and maybe it is, but being able to interact with a switch in each room that turns on the lights, or turns them off, um, as well as door panels that allow you to manually open doors um, or lock a door is actually pretty 
cool. The doors do also automatically open as long as they're not locked um, if you get close enough to them. So the ship has effectively two decks and there are vents below the, sh the ship basically forming the lower deck. These vents are openable and accessible in each of the sections of the ship. So we have the scanning room with a vent, the server room, habitation, and uh, a special one in the recreation room that is opened via putting the White Queen chess piece on a nearby coaster. Don't lose that White Queen, otherwise you might not be able to get into that little secret area as easily. Uh, there are also a couple of more hidden panels near the cargo area of the ship so as you go into the cargo bay immediately on the starboard side of the ship on the right there's a panel there by the the opening of the actual door you can open that up and then interact with that which will open a door to the smuggling area and the vents also in the engineering section at the back wall on the right there's a panel there you can interact with that to open a path to the vents there as well. Also, all of these routes can be opened from the other side too. These vents are going to be easily accessible by the ship owners, but not so much for other players or hostiles on board. That allows the crew to move around, pop up anywhere they really want, and even potentially move smuggled items around to trick uh, people that are searching their ship. There is quite a bit of updated information from the fluff of the Mercury Star Runner launch page that I will go through quickly. Transport and delivery, no matter the payload, we understand that keeping your cargo in perfect condition is the key to success, and we know that not every run goes to plan. Now you can rest easy knowing that you'll arrive quickly and safely thanks to the Mercury. Stay ahead of the schedule, trouble, and the competition. Combat and defensive. From navigating asteroid fields to fighting off attackers, the Mercury Star Runner's defensive and offensive abilities shine. Prodigious protection and weapons packages ensure you're prepared if things take a turn for the worse. Whether you're with a crew or taking on a job solo. Style and attitude. The Mercury's proclivity for acceleration, high G maneuverability, and top speed cruising are evident in the ship's distinctive asymmetrical design. It perfectly captures our trademark aesthetic and obsession with balance both literally and figuratively its speed and style exemplified so gameplay wise the mercury star runner is in my opinion the best mission running ship in game for a crew of three or two to three i suppose it's a shame it does not have a med bay though that said maybe in the future we can get some limited med treatment in other ways that we could have on board maybe um it's competing more with the carrack in my opinion, the most other ships, the Carrick being much more expensive, but having more facilities and having that sort of key medical facility at the moment that you can respawn on, but not the data running potential of the Mercury Star Runner, no, nor is it as small. So exploration or over three crew, then the Carrick is almost certainly a better choice if you need that sort of like medical bay. I personally think that the ship could be run effectively with up to five crew, that Mercury Star Runner, but only for like quick short term missions. Having someone in each of the turrets, um, a pilot and a co-pilot, and uh, maybe uh, in someone in the scanning chair. Yeah, you could you could sort of run the ship like that maybe. Its facilities do better suit a crew of three though, three beds, and really, you'd probably be only running three of those stations at once anyway. The three sets of weapons under control from three different players allow for some really good PvE mission running, while also being able to actually repel some players. It can do pretty much anything in-game other than mining at the moment as well, which is absolutely fantastic. I think it looks great too. The major issue is that the ship is far too fuel hungry currently, although I have been assured that that's going to change. Also, I find that the engine overheat warnings, engines too hot, engines too hot, is rather comical rather than anything else. So there are some different skins available for the Mercury Star Runner that are usable now. Um, all the Mercury Star Runners come with that standard sort of Mercury Star Runner skin, uh, but you can also purchase a polar skin, which is sort of white camo, and um, there's also the Sky Rider skin, for those of you that like that sort of black and blue, or more blue uh, sort of look. There is the Night Runner skin, which was given as a reward for completing the original Track the Belligerent Duck concept game. Uh, in the future, we are going to be able to customize our ships with various paint schemes, more readily in game as part of the aftermarket customization and you'll be able to make something pretty similar to even the exclusive skins so 
There's a load of mechanics that aren't in game yet that the Mercury Star Runner is going to be able to do. The hidden smuggling area is more of an extra secure area and it won't have um, you automatically being able to smuggle any goods that you put there with like avoiding scans or anything like that. You're going to still get scanned. You're still going to get checked. You're still going to want to avoid those by going different routes or by uh, being clever. Maybe um, there'll be cargo sort of containers that you can... Uh, also use that help shield what's in them but it's not just a magic bullet to bam I'm now invincible from smuggling and, and I don't have to worry about um, the police. Uh, we are waiting on the data running gameplay and the data interception gameplay. That large server room and the sort of computers there is core to some of the money making and mission opportunities of that Mercury Star Runner. That scanning dish as well that's um, probably going to be very useful for extracting data as part of missions or general detection as well. But we need those mechanics in our hands before we can actually really judge them. AI blades and NPC crew in the future as well will allow spots on the Mercury Star Runner to be filled if you're running with just a crew of one to two people. Or even if you are running with a larger crew, you can have the sort of AI modules or the, the blades or whatever doing things for you while you're running around repairing stuff or whatever. I do think the ship is sort of viable to run solo if you make some concessions, if you're sort of like trying to avoid most combat. I suppose it's still, still got some reasonable firepower even with just one um, pilot, uh, but um, it depends on the, the missions you go for, and I do think it's obviously better suited for three people. So you might be running around a bit if it's solo as well, if you want to move around to different systems and do things. If the ship had a medical bay, I would actually say it's pretty perfect. But it is cheaper than the Carrack and an amazing mission running ship. I expect this to be one of the, if not the most, popular ship that is flyable for quite some time. But what do you think? Do you have yourself a Mercury Star Runner as well? Are you planning to pick one up in a sale or um, get it in game at some point? If you had the choice between the Carrack and the Mercury Star Runner, which would you pick? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Each month we have a ship giveaway for November. We are giving away a Mercury Star Runner again. This highly anticipated multi-role ship is great for small to medium-sized crews that want to do uh, a bit of everything, whether that be cargo running, data running, missions, combat, smuggling, all that sort of jazz. All you've got to do to be in for a chance of winning one is comment on any of my videos made for November, including this one. More details down below. What am I shilling for today, I hear you ask? Do you hate it when people steal all of your money and your house over the internet? I know I do. NordVPN may have been invented by wizards to help protect your personal data from the prying eyes of the dark web, a sinister cabal of technomancers that grow in power the more they know about your browsing habits. The true story of NordVPN's origins are unknown and lost to the ages, and without using facts. No one really knows how it provides more accessibility to otherwise censored websites or a safer security experience for all that use it. All I know is that it does and that when you sign up to it, the power level of my bank account grows and I use it and maybe you should too.